Jesus Christ was angry, or that he changed water into a wine for people to drink. Our Lord Jesus Christ behaved in this way, because things had not yet been made perfect by then. That is to say, he had not yet shed his precious blood. The moment he shed his blood and made the pronouncement it is finished, John chapter 19 verse 30, everything was concluded. When we were using the old currency, the pound sterling, which was the legal tender then. At that time, you could use that money in buying anything you wanted. But now it has ceased to be the legal tender, if you use it now, you are acting against the law. I want to quote to you various passages from the Bible, so you may know the assignment of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so you may guard against the errors and mistakes he made. Our Lord Jesus Christ wept and mourned when Lazarus died. But now, any day you weep or mourn, no matter the circumstances, you cannot enter this kingdom. Any day you say woe unto any person, then you have deprived yourself of this kingdom. Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 23. Then began he to upgrade the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not, woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For, if the mighty works, which were done in you, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment, than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell, for, if the mighty works, which have been done in thee, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 23. When you come into brotherhood of the cross and star, you are told all the things you should not indulge in. Therefore, if you entangle yourself in those things, which you were warned not to do, you are lost. I have come to establish the new kingdom of God on earth. This is the new heaven and earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13. Moses in his own advent came to establish judgment. But our Lord Jesus Christ came to modify and confirm the judgment of Moses. My mission is to establish the new kingdom of God on earth, so the will of God may be done on earth, as it is done in heaven. In this new kingdom, I have nothing to do with abuses, annoyance, hatred or any vice. I have not come in order to judge or condemn you, but to make everything new. Therefore, no matter how badly behaved your children are, do not beat them. Do you understand the intricacies of the kingdom? The intricacies of this kingdom are quite clear to the outsiders. That is those, who are not yet born, into this kingdom. They know, no one inside this kingdom is permitted to indulge in any manner of sin. I have told you, many of you do not understand my mission on earth. Just as you have in the secular world, various stages of establishments, like the magistrate courts, the court of appeal and the supreme court, so also, does the same situation prevail in the spiritual world. The supreme court is the equivalent of the Holy Spirit personified. Even though our Lord Jesus Christ cursed the scribes and the Pharisees, such a thing cannot happen in this kingdom. You are not to pronounce woe well unto any person, because this is the new kingdom of God, where righteousness dwells. You are not to curse or abuse anyone. Neither are you to frown your face. Any day you curse or abuse anyone, you are under the judgment of hellfire. John chapter 11 verse 35, Jesus wept. Perhaps you want to console yourself by shedding tears. Any day you weep in this new kingdom, you cannot enter into it. You are not to shed tears, or be sorrowful throughout your life. Our Lord Jesus Christ wept and became sorrowful, because he was in the flesh. This is the beginning of the spiritual assignment. Brethren, have you not read the small pamphlet in Brotherhood entitled, The First Step to God, which says, you must not shed tears. You must not cry or mourn in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Is there any of you who is aware nobody is permitted to cry no matter the circumstances? To cry is the work of the flesh. All those who attend funerals and shed tears have scored zero. Do you know where a man comes from, or where he goes when he dies? Man is the property of God, and whatever it pleases him to do with human beings, he is entitled to do. You have no right to question him. John chapter 2 verse 15. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep, and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew their tables. John chapter 2 verse 15. All our Lord Jesus Christ did was, what was written about him. If he had not accomplished all these things, he would not have been the one prophesied about. 
he did not make any mistakes. After accomplishing all that had been written about him, he made a pronouncement that is finished. John chapter 19 verse 30. Tomorrow, when you argue, our Lord Jesus Christ left, turned water into a wine, and became angry, remember he told you, the work of the flesh was over. All of you know, when the battle is very fierce, the king himself will come and lead the army. All these facts prove to you, I know our Lord Jesus Christ, and the assignment he had come to perform. From time to time, Jehovah God and his Christ has to send a human being to the world for a specific assignment. Where one person stops, is where the other person will begin. The assignments of God can be likened to a contractor, who is erecting a building. It is not the bricklayer, who will do the roofing of the house, neither will it be the carpenter, who will handle the wiring of the house, and so on. The same thing happens, when God sends a person to perform a certain assignment on earth. When one person finishes his assignment, another person will continue from there. Our Lord Jesus Christ came and finished his assignment, by shedding his blood for the remission of our sins. The present assignment is an entirely different one. That is to establish the new kingdom of God on earth, as it is in heaven. The new heaven and the new earth, where righteousness dwells. I have told you, during the colonial era, there were many rules and regulations. If you rode a bicycle without a lantern, you have contravened the law. One person was riding a bicycle in the night, and he carefully hung a lantern on the bicycle, without lighting it. He was consequently arrested by the police for riding his bicycle without a lantern. You can't see the law was very flexible. It is for this reason laws are always amended. The man, who had been arrested told the police, he had been riding his bicycle with a lantern, in conformity with the law. Therefore the people, who made the law found a certain clause in the law needed amendment. So they instituted another law, any person who rides a bicycle should have a light on, or a lantern with light. Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 to 20. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 to 20. These are the amendments to the laws of Moses. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets but to fulfill. Except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom mentioned in the statement is brotherhood of the cross and star. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ requested him to teach them how to pray. He taught them to say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. This is that kingdom they had prayed for so many years ago. The question is who is prepared to enter into this kingdom? This kingdom has nothing to do with sin. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. When our Lord Jesus Christ will appear the second time, he will have no association with sinners. At the moment, you are still calling him a friend of sinners. Do you think, he will come to continue the work of death, by associating with the evil ones? Who are those who are really waiting for the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ? 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Many of you are not looking for this kingdom. Rather you are looking for the mundane things, which have nothing to do with this kingdom. In this kingdom, only righteousness is expected. Nothing and righteous will enter into it. 1 John chapter 3 verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even, as he is pure. How many people in the world have prepared themselves for this kingdom? You only come here to joke and play, seeking for only material things, which mean, that you do not want to enter, this kingdom. This thing you are joking with, will become a source of lamentation at the end of this generation. I have often told you, you do not understand the meaning of this kingdom. 
I have warned you not to compare me with Moses, Melchizedek.